The gene keys can change your life, but how the heck do we read that crazy geometric looking diagram you see there? What are the circles? What are the numbers? What are the colors? And most importantly, how can you actually apply this stuff? The system will change your life, but we need to know some basics. We need to give some parameters so that we can let the wisdom come into us. So in this series, we're going to cover the gene keys themselves, the lines, the pathways, the spheres, the frequency bands, sequences, how to get started, and where you're actually going to start. So this is a Gene Keys profile. And if you haven't already, I want you to pause the video right now, go to genekeys.com, click the free profile button, and that way you can follow along as I go through sphere by sphere and pathway by pathway. There's a lot happening here, but let's start by breaking this down one step at a time. So we're going to start by defining some terms. First, we have spheres, and there are 11 spheres, but three of them have a double meaning, and we'll talk more about that later on. Each sphere represents a different aspect of your life and contains a specific key relating to your birth data. So here we see the spheres, all the different circles, and the title of each sphere is bolded at the top. For example, if you look at the very top sphere, that's called your life's work, and that's what you're here to do in the world. Now, let's talk about the pathways, of which there are 12. And pathways are more collective in nature, and they connect two or more spheres together with a theme. They represent an inward journey towards absorption an eventual embodiment, AKA enlightenment or awakening. So the pathways, which you can see here, are an inner journey where we travel back to our source. That's why it's called the golden path. And once we get back to that source, we come and bring that wisdom back out into the world again. And the goal of the Gene Keys is for you to understand your specific flavor of enlightenment. And enlightenment is so hard to pin down because it shows up so many different ways based on our genetics. It also shows us how we're meant to re-engage with the world once we have felt this new sense of being, this new way of seeing the world. Now let's talk about the gene keys and frequency bands. So obviously this is where the wisdom gets its namesake. And honestly, if you just ignored your profile and contemplated the keys, you'd find yourself walking the golden path without a profile. However, you can get info for each key via the book or audio, and it certainly does help to walk that path. So here we see the gene keys. The numbers that you see are my specific keys, and the words you see are the different frequency bands. They're called the shadow, the gift, and the city. And I could talk about this a ton, but the most important thing to remember is that every shadow contains a gift and it is our job to see the shadow, to learn about it, to accept it and to integrate it into our being. And as we do that, our frequency gradually begins to rise. So if you look at the sphere all the way over to the right hand side, you see that's expectation, detachment and celebration. So as I learn to deal with the energy of expectation, it teaches me the gift of detachment. Moving on now to the lines. And the lines come from the hexagram structure of the I Ching, which is an ancient Chinese wisdom that the gene keys were built upon. And the lines have different keynotes depending on which sphere we're in. However, it is always the same underlying energy. So once you start to understand the lines, you can apply them across all the different spheres without needing to know specifically what goes where. Here, you can see that I have a line six for my life's work, that very top sphere where it says 32.6. Also a six line for 42.6, the sphere all the way over to the right. And you can see that top sphere is keynoted teacher. And that, it's no mistake that I'm here giving you this presentation right now. The sixth line at the sphere of evolution all the way over to the right is keynoted education and surrender. So in order to teach, I must first become educated and I have to surrender because it takes a long time to acquire the knowledge that I need. 
And that requires sacrifice and surrender. So you can start to see how these things work together. Now we talk about the golden path, which are the three components of a Gene Keys profile. And we want to dig where the water is the shallowest. When you're digging a well, it's easiest to dig where the water is closest to the surface, not where it's deepest. And that's why typically we would start with the activation sequence. Because trying to open your heart without being activated, without knowing that there is more to the world than you can see, is nearly impossible. And what you'll also see is your purpose, which is the last sphere of the activation sequence, also opens to your purpose in the Venus sequence, into your relationships. And that's because this wisdom is holographic in nature. Finally, the last phase is the pearl sequence, which is liberating prosperity. And there's a big difference between prosperity and wealth. And it's easy to build wealth. We can start to build something without an open heart, but it always ends in catastrophe. And I am a perfect example of that. So we move on to the first sequence, which is the activation sequence. And to enact your higher purpose, you need to find stability, faith, and trust, which is what the activation sequence is all about. It opens our view of the world and starts to change the physical chemistry of our body. And the gifts that are in the activation sequence are known as your four prime gifts because they sort of underpin everything else that we do along the golden path. So here in green, you see the activation sequence. And the prime gifts, if you look at the very top sphere, is preservation. All the way over to the right is detachment. All the way over to the left is enrichment. And down there at the bottom is realism. So those are my four prime gifts. This overall profile would be considered the profile of a 6-2. So if you've ever heard two numbers like that, it's taken from these lines of the activation sequence. And what you'll notice is that always in every profile, the lines of the life's work and the evolution will always have the same line and the lines of the radiance and the purpose will always have the same line. And that's because those pairs, so life's work and evolution, as well as radiance and purpose are what are called programming partners. And they are opposites that reinforce a pattern in your life. So taking mine for an example, my shadow of my life's work is failure and the shadow of my evolution is expectation. So it's easy to see how I have an expectation and when it doesn't get met, I perceive that as a failure, but there is no such thing as failure and that's what leads me to understand the gift of detachment. So these are things that work together with one another. So let's get into our first sphere now. So the life's work sphere, as I said, is what you do outwardly in the world. And at first I took this exclusively as external, but part of your life's work is doing the, ec the internal change, excuse me, that allows you to show up externally in the way that you're meant to show up. It's, it's a recognition of what drives your behavior outwardly. So this sphere of life's work is where your spirit meets the outer world. Leaving the sphere of life's work now, we travel this first pathway down into the right, which is the pathway of challenge. And this pathway connects life's work to evolution, which is our first set of programming partners. And the pathway of challenge serves as a dynamic engine for growth. And through the programming partners playing with one another on either side of this pathway, we can either be driven into madness or we can open to the miraculous possibility of change. So it's our job to think about, to contemplate the spheres on either side of this pathway and to harness that shadow frequency and to open the gift. And it's going to keep coming back in our lives as we arrive next at the sphere of evolution all the way over to the right. And the evolution is your greatest challenge in life. It's the lesson that you must learn because if you do not, it's going to drive you crazy. Even if you do, it's going to keep coming back. And like a splinter in your foot, you're going to have to keep paying attention to it because it is what is going to keep driving you forward. 
Seeing the shadow of your evolution in life is one of the most important aspects for awakening your prime gifts. You have to catch it playing in real time. And when you do, you can begin to respond differently. And that's how our frequency begins to change. Now we move across our next pathway, moving from evolution into our radiance. And you see, this is the pathway of breakthrough. And this is moving from conscious to unconscious, what we say is crossing the veil in the gene keys. So our radiance and our purpose are subconscious. We do not have direct control of them, which is why it's so important to pay attention to your life's work and evolution because those are in your control. But the frequency that's going to show up in your radiance and your purpose is dictated by how you respond to those first two spheres. And that's why that pathway of challenge is so critical. Once we have raised up the frequency of the pattern of the first two, then something magical occurs. And that is a breakthrough where this pathway gets its namesake. At some point, we just experience this inner shift that changes everything. And when you do, you cannot go back. And there's nothing you can do to make this happen. You just have to keep being present, keep taking pauses, keep contemplating. And on the other side of the pathway of, pathway of breakthrough, we arrive at the sphere of radiance. And your radiance is what shines out of your aura. And it's a figurative and literal, but we'll save that for another video, release of light that brightens everything around you. So the sphere of our radiance dictates our health, our vitality, our aura. And your aura is just the electromagnetic afterglow of your inner essence. It cannot be seen directly with the naked eye, but it can be sensed by human intuition. This is why when you walk into a room, sometimes you're drawn to some people and repelled by others. Your radiance also acts as a hidden instrument of your intuition. It warns of potential threats. It helps you to feel into the environment and it guides you towards the right experiences in your life. Coming out of the sphere of the radiance, we go to our final pathway in the activation sequence, which is called the pathway of core stability. And this connects the second pair of programming partners, your radiance and your purpose. And it's called the pathway of core stability because in the beginning, these breakthroughs are going to come and go. But as we walk the pathway of core stability, we're going to be better able to hold on to these higher frequencies. So this pathway, like I said, represents unconscious forces that propel us along our life's journey. So this set of programming partners are the unconscious drivers that keep us moving forward, keep us growing. And at some point, we have to admit that we cannot control what is going on around us because these are unconscious. We just have to learn to ride those waves. And finally, we end up at the sphere of purpose down at the bottom of our profile here. And the question everyone wants to find an answer to is, what is my purpose? And let me give you maybe something that might come as a relief, which is that purpose does not put us in, under any pressure to attain, achieve anything. Instead, it's about resting more deeply in a quality that already is inside of us. So the the sphere of your purpose is who you are meant to be. Life is much simpler than we make it out to be. We don't have to do anything. We're here just to learn how to be. And the gene keys speak of a higher purpose as opposed to just purpose. Your true purpose lies beyond your conscious reach. It's hidden in your DNA and it's designed to be unlocked by life. It calls upon you to evolve through your challenges and it shows up progressively over the course of your life as you move through the breakthroughs and transformations that come your way. Finally, we have the six lines in the activation sequence. And these are actually the specific keynotes for life's work, but as I said, the same energy underlines the lines in every single sphere. So for example, line two in the sphere of your radiance is what's called marriage. And that's not literal marriage, but it's a flow with something that you keep close, something specific to you, just like dancing, which is the keynote here for the second line in the sphere of life's work. So what I'm trying to say here is 
the dancer and the marriage, you can see how those are the same thing, just expressed differently because they're in different areas. So line one is all about going within, keynoted the creator. It's all about the foundation. It's all about going inside and bringing something back out to the world. Line two, keynoted the dancer. It's about playing with life. It's about ease and passion. Line three, keynoted changer, is all about experiences. We change because we experience different things. And it's about humor and, and making trouble because we're constantly stepping into new situations. Line three just needs to taste life. Then we go into the fourth line, which is the server. And it's all about friendship and community. It's all about service, making people feel loved. The fifth line is the fixer, and that's all about practicality. It's about power. It's about influence, the things that we need to help people solve problems in their lives. And then finally, line six is the teacher, the line of yours truly. It's about seeing the big picture and trying to shape the way that people see the world. Now we come out of the activation sequence and we move into the Venus sequence. So once we have some stability in ourselves, we can move on to interacting with other people in the world without being fear, without fearing being triggered or tripped up by our shadow patterns all the time. And it's not that it's not going to happen sometimes, but we need to have some stability inside of ourselves before we start doing the Venus sequence work, the relationship work, because we need to know what's ours and what is somebody else's. And the way that we do the Venus work is by unpicking the weave of your defense patterns and your emotional wounding. And it's hard work because we realize that we're the ones that per we're perceiving things in a way that didn't serve us the entire time. And that can be a hard pill to swallow. So here we see the Venus sequence in red. And this is the first sequence where we see a sphere serve double duty. So the sphere of purpose describes how we were here to be in the activation sequence, but it also opens up to how we show up in our relationships. What is our purpose in opening others? We learn that the opening of our heart comes from aligning with our inner life's purpose. So the sphere of our purpose in the Venus sequence is a, it's, it's a quality of being in relationship. It allows you to serve the people in your life in a way that makes you feel whole instead of a way that makes you feel worn down. So instead of being a martyr, we show up in true service. And purpose and love is spreading your heart opening. It's realizing that your heart is yours and that you can help other people open their heart. Your aura has a powerful effect on other people. So the first pathway that we see in the Venus sequence is the pathway of Dharma. And the pathway of Dharma is what starts the, the engine of the universal currents that help you grow and evolve. So Dharma is your soul's purpose. It's the path that's laid out before you so that you can grow. In order to continue growing and evolving, we choose a lesson that we are to learn in life each time we show back up here on Gaia. And the Dharma is your soul's deepest lesson. On the other end of the pathway of Dharma, we come into the sphere of attraction. And if you're interested in the law of attraction, then you'll want to pay attention to this sphere because that's what this is talking about. That said, the law of attraction leaves out a huge part of the story. And I have a whole video on the law of attraction if you're interested in checking that out. But the sphere of attraction is driven by the moon. It's this hidden force that pulls in all the events, all the people, places in our lives that give us an opportunity over and over again to open our hearts and be willing to accept our dharma. The sphere of attraction dictates your sexuality, your creativity, and it's driven by desire. But like the moon, those desires shift and they change. So it's not the desire that you're after, but it's the energy that the desire motivates in you that really matters. It's not necessarily what you want, but it's absolutely what you need. Those are the things that are called to you. But you have to learn how to see it that way because that's what raises our frequency. 
So connecting the sphere of attraction and the IQ is our next pathway, the pathway of karma. And this can be a confusing word because many people associate it with cause and effect, but we're going to look at it through a slightly different lens here. So Dharma is the big picture mission and your karma are things that you put in front of you or things that are put in front of you to help you achieve that mission. They are an engine for our growth or they're an engine for destruction, depending on how you choose to work with the things showing up in your life. So karma is not simply cause and effect, although it is the universe responding to the energy that you're putting out into the world. But it's how you handle your karma that dictates how the next round of karma shows up for you. So if you want to test this, be nice for a day and see what happens. And then be mean for a day and see what happens. And that will show you karma. Dharma the sphere of attraction and karma all work together to move you closer to the universe, to move you closer to God. Now we move to the sphere of IQ, which is where the real hard work of the Venus sequence begins. And the next three spheres are really the holy grail of opening your heart and in turn opening your entire profile. So this is where we begin to see the wounding patterns we took on as we incarnated into the world of form and left the wholeness of the other planes. So there are seven year cycles that are agreed upon by most developmental psychologists and the IQ, EQ and SQ tie to those seven year phases of development. So the SQ is zero to seven years old, the EQ seven to 14 years old, and the IQ, this sphere is developed when we're 14 to 21 years old. And the Venus sequence works on unpicking the weave of the wounding patterns that you develop throughout those periods of time from the outside to the inside. So if you think of all the things that have happened, all the big and little T traumas, that showed up in our lives, that, that led us to develop ways of thinking and ideologies that make the world a little bit more palatable, but at the same time, blind us to true reality. They protected you. However, if we wanna grow, we have to get through those defense strategies and see things as they are, instead of seeing them through our model of the world. And your IQ is the mental pattern, the mental model, the mental defense strategy that showed up when you were 14 to 21 years old, when you felt overwhelmed. It's the psychology that you have that shows up when you get triggered. So leaving the sphere of IQ, we have the pathway of intelligence, which at the shadow frequency is actually also known as the pathway of defense. So remember, the whole profile is hologenetic in nature. And so this pathway of intelligence is analogous to the pathway of challenge from the activation sequence. So this is our in our conscious control. The sphere of IQ and EQ is our great conscious challenge. And basically what our job is, is to balance our IQ and our EQ. This pathway represents our intellectual and emotional challenges. And as we move through this pathway, we understand or we start to understand that this is not all love and light. To get to the love and light, we have to be willing to face the darkness that's contained in us and all of humanity. And only those willing to see the blackness, the true dark, get to see the true light. So the question is, will you turn away or will you be willing to face it? And the pathway of intelligence is a lot more than IQ, and it's a lot more than EQ, the next sphere that's coming up. It is a balance between the two. IQ is very Martian. It's very sharp. It's task-oriented. The EQ is from Venus. It's very emotional, soft, and open. And I can't be so sharp, so lodged in my IQ that I'm disconnected from my emotional cues and information. That cuts me off from the world. But I also can't be so emotional, I turn into a ball of mush and I'm unable to communicate because I am so emotional. So the pathway of intelligence or defense is this emotional shutdown or mental shutdown switch when things go wrong. 
we, we lash out. That's the pathway of defense. Or we have the pathway of intelligence, which is about balancing our IQ and our EQ so that we can constantly choose love regardless of what's happening. It's our choice to choose whether we dip into the shadow frequency or accept the gift. So leaving that pathway of intelligence, we come to the sphere of the EQ. How will we choose to respond in emotionally charged situations? And as I said, EQ is developed from seven to 14 years old. And it's an emotional pattern that protect us, protected us from an intense feeling that we didn't know how to handle. And the shadow is of the EQ is what tends to engage when you feel unsafe, especially emotionally. So an example of this is sometime when you were 7 to 14 years old, maybe your parents had a big fight or you were being made fun of and you had this emotional shutdown switch. And this is very feminine. It's driven by the planet Venus. And what we need to realize is that your emotional responses are yours regardless of what others do to trigger you. So are you going to choose to break the cycle or are you going to charge, choose to lean into that trigger and to punish yourself? There's what's known as the Eden loop in relationships, which is I get triggered and then I do something to trigger you. And then we go on this, this trigger meltdown, this snowball effect, but it only takes one person to break that Eden loop. Leaving the sphere of EQ, we walk the pathway of love. And there is no shadow keynote for this pathway because it represents the boring down of your awareness to your heart and the flood of love that gets released when you do make your way there because there is so much being held back by this pathway. And again, because it's hologenetic in nature, this pathway is analogous to the pathway of breakthrough in the activation sequence. So this is like breaking a dam and this flood of love happens. Remember, the pathway of breakthrough is also where we go through from conscious to unconscious. So now our next two spheres are, are not conscious choices. That's why we can't choose to keep our heart open. IQ and EQ are our, where we need to spend the most of our attention because they are conscious. This SQ is subconscious. And that's why the IQ and EQ are the coal face of the Venus sequence. Your goal is to keep those in the gift frequency as much as possible. And when you do that, that's what allows your heart to open. I can't just focus on my sphere of SQ and make that open my heart because this is unconscious. And when we are able to keep our IQ and EQ in our gift frequency or in the city frequency, that's what leads to the breakthrough. And that's what allows in the activation sequence, your radiance to shine through. And in the Venus sequence, it allows your love, your heart to shine through. So the sphere of your SQ is this innocent and beautiful place to contemplate where you can feel this warmth. And when you can feel it, you know you're getting close. And it's also the place where we enter the land of the archetype, archetypes, uh, uh, the land of the hero's journey. So the sphere of SQ is zero to seven years old. So this is a deep, deep pattern when we felt physically unsafe, often before we have conscious memory. And your SQ dictates your mythology. It helps us to see the world in archetypes and allows us to walk our hero's journey. We get this degree of separation that allows us to be brave and to be courageous. We cannot or will not do what is needed in our lives if we don't believe in our bellies, at our core, that God or the universe is supporting us. These are huge steps to take and our little ego is just too scared. So it's not that we need to like or love everything that happens. That's not what the SQ is about, but it is trusting that everything that happens is a part of God's plan and so therefore is going to further the growth of your soul. Leaving the sphere of our SQ, we find ourselves on the final pathway of the Venus sequence, the pathway of realization. And this is self-realization or enlightenment. And this is a deep journey that takes a lifetime. Don't think you're going to get there by contemplating this for a month. 
This pathway is analogous to the pathway of core stability in the activation sequence, and it is how we keep our heart open permanently. So all of these pathways are working our way back to the womb and realizing that we are born into the world wounded already. But your suffering is what connects you to everything and everyone else because at the most basic level, we're all born into the to the world with this suffering, with this wound of separation. And that is the sacred wound. That is what allows us to be compassionate. And the pathway of realization marches us towards that sacred wound. And finally, we approach the sphere of the core, the core wound, the sacred wound that connects all of us. And it is imprinted at conception and built into your DNA for the first nine months when you are in the wound. And it's a wound that you carry for the collective. It is nobody's fault. It is simply part of being human. It is for our ancestors and our unborn children. And it is the deep knowing that we need to remember, to come back together. And you'll see it's also the thing that drives our creative impulse to serve the world. Remember, every shadow contains a gift. And finally, we have the six lines of the Venus sequence. So line one is a deep fear of not existing. It's repression. That's what we're repressing, this deep fear of not being, of something going wrong. And the solution to that is honesty, being honest with yourself and honest with the world. And these are specifically the six lines of the core. Again, though, you can extrapolate these to every sphere of the Venus sequence and of the whole profile. Line two. Some of you may have heard what I said about line one and said, absolutely not. I am not wounded. I am not scared of not existing. I'm not worried about any of that. And that, my friends, is denial. (laughs) Line twos can be aggressive because they are unaware and denial leads to rage because they can't accept it's them or that something is in them. So they blame the other person. But there is a solution to this and it is simply ease to take it easy, to give grace, to flow. And eventually something will happen that opens your eyes. Line three is about shame. So I lashed out in the second line and now I'm ashamed. And shame is this heaviness, this feeling of not being enough, of not acting quote unquote right in the world. And the solution to the shame is humor. It's laughing at ourselves. It's seeing that we all have our stuff and so there's no reason to feel shame. It's seeing that this is all one big joke. Line four is rejection. So we came clean with how we're feeling and go to someone. We overcame our shame. We go and talk to someone and they reject us and they say, no, you should feel ashamed because they haven't done their work. It's not about you, it's about them. But we take what they say as gospel. We feel that rejection at our core. And the solution is about gentleness. Think about a dog who has been mistreated. How would you act with that animal? That's the gentleness that unlocks this shadow keynote of rejection. Line five is guilt. And this is deeper than shame. This is guilt for humanity, guilt for what our ancestors have done. And line five, remember, is the line of power, the line of practicality and of leaders. And that guilt drives people to manipulate others so that they feel better. That is why it's powerful. However, you can come from a different place with forgiveness, forgiveness of yourself, forgiveness of the world for everything that has happened and everything that we've done. When we can do that, then we can lead from a place of deep and true power. And then finally, line six is about separation and care. It's about the fact that we see one another as different. And because we're different, I don't need to pay attention to you. And this sixth line is how we allow genocide. And the simple solution here is to care, to show others that you actually are worried about them and their welfare. Then we come into the final sequence, which is the pearl sequence. 
So the activation sequence opens our view of the world and starts to change the body chemistry. The Venus sequence opens our heart and connects us to the world and the people in it. And the pearl sequence calls in the specific people that we're meant to serve with. It dares us to enact the wisdom that we've gained on the material plane. So the pearl sequence is about unlocking prosperity. And again, the last sphere of the Venus sequence is what opens us up in the first sphere of the pearl. So your deepest wound becomes your vocation, the thing that you are meant to share with the world. After you've processed it inside of yourself, it is your duty to act on it in service. And we can bring the pearl online before doing the other work. In fact, that's what I did. And it is dangerous territory. I wound up in a bankruptcy, in a divorce, blowing up a lot of things because I built this big, successful business that gave me wealth, but did the opposite of making me prosper. And building a business for money or to prove that you're worthy only can end one way. And that is the difference between wealth and prosperity. So the sphere of vocation, remember, coming into the sphere was the pathway of realization, which is a metaphor for uniting our lower nature, our shadow nature with our higher nature and the city nature. And in many myths, this reunion is the end of the story because you found wholeness. But the pearl asks us to apply that wholeness to, into service in the world. And your vocation represents your unique talent. And the universe calls you to, make, to take initiative and to use it to help others along their path. Coming out of the sphere of vocation, I already hinted at this pathway. It's the pathway of initiative. The time has come to stop thinking and to turn your contemplation into action in the world. It is time to steal fire from the gods. The pathway of initiative gives us an opportunity to take our contemplation outward. And we're never going to feel ready. We're never going to feel fully healed. And it's the constant striving for healing that's preventing you from actually doing the work needed to actually heal. It is acting in service that allows that healing to take place. So it's time. It's time to send a signal to the universe that we're ready. It's time to take action. And that's what the pathway of initiative is all about. And then we approach a sphere of that is holding back tons of potential energy. So just like the sphere of evolution and the activation sequence and the sphere of IQ and the Venus sequence, the sphere of our culture here unleashes the powers of synchronicity and ties you to your fractal line. So this is well worth contemplating. This sphere shows us that we are all designed to work together. Even in uh, us humans, even a true creative, needs others to sell and market and organize their ideas. Your vocation is that rare genius that was imprinted on you at the moment of conception. And it's the genetic recipe you have for your differentiated genius. The sphere of your culture, on the other hand, describes the environmental relationships that curl around you in response to the activation of your genius. So this is a call and response. So we take the initiative, we put it out into the world, and then the universe brings in your culture. It brings in your place in the world and surrounds you with the people that you need to continue to do your work. Now, with our personal gifts in place and with the support of our fractal line, it is time to grow. So leaving the sphere of our culture and marching towards the sphere of brand is this pathway of growth. And the interesting thing about growth is that it isn't at all dependent on frequency. And this means that, like I said, the shadow consciousness can make use of this pathway for its own purposes. So in business, usually the first goal of all is to make money, which may or may not be used to serve the whole. But when we put service first, even before making money, then you engage the true beneficial force of the universe. So an easy formula to remember is initiative plus growth equals wealth, which is unsustainable. Wealth accumulates. 
However, if we do initiative plus growth plus service, that ends in prosperity, which is a sustainable model. And prosperity is all about not just financial prosperity, but prosperity in relationships, prosperity in love, prosperity in knowing that you're supported, prosperity in health. We see another sphere that we've seen before next. On the other end of this pathway of growth, what was formerly your life's work is now the sphere of the brand. And this is your soul's brand. Because we are no longer who we were when we first started the golden path. At this point, we recognize that there is no us in the first place. The sphere of your brand is your soul's flavor. And brand comes from an old Saxon word, brinnen, which means both to burn and sword. So your brand is an extension of you, like a sword. And it bears your mark, like a cattle brand. And your brand describes the style and the frequency of your outward expression in the world. It comes across in the clothes you wear, in the way you talk, in the language that you use. We're all actors in this matrix. So who will you be? What cloak are you going to wear? That's what the brand asks of you. Then we come to the final pathway of our profile. We'll talk about the quantum here in just a second, but the pathway of the quantum isn't really a true pathway. So this final pathway ends in service, and that is no mistake. The final pathway leads back to the sphere of our core. It leads back to the sphere of our vocation. But now that sphere has become our muse for compassionate action in the world. And this ceiling of energy creates a torus. This ability for your energy and your love to constantly feed on itself. So no matter what comes your way, you'll always be able to handle it and to act in service. Our final sphere, right in the dead center, gives its namesake to the final sequence. It's the pearl. And the pearl integrates all the spheres into one explosive and powerful place, not just the spheres of the pearl, but all the spheres of your profile. And at the same time, we're returned to the ordinary world, but now we have a new lens through which to see it. The insight of the pearl is that true prosperity is to be found in a life lived well, a life lived with an open heart, always remembering the essential and with a higher purpose at its core. Does that describe your life? If it does, great. But if it doesn't, it gives you something powerful to aspire to. That's what the pearl is all about. Returning to simplicity. And the pathway of quantum is, is different in that it's really a fusion of all of the other pathways that we've traveled. The pearl comes online in its own time. Only when we activate our genius with an open heart and liberate our prosperity can it begin to crystallize in our lives. Every so often, a total frame shift occurs in the universe. For example, going from a single-celled organism to a multi-celled organism. And these shifts also occur in our individual awareness. It's like seeing the punchline of a joke you didn't hear anyone tell in the first place. It's this aha moment. Seeking only takes you so far. The pathway of the quantum brings the gene key's wisdom to an end. It brings all wisdom to an end. It's like the self-destruct built into the teaching. And then finally, we have the six lines of the pearl. And these are from the actual pearl sphere itself. Line one is about simplicity, which is remembering what you really need in life, not what everyone else tells you that you need in life. Line two, second lines can't help but be recognized for how they live, but they love passing that recognition on to other people. And that is what the second line is all about in the pearl. Line three is celebration. All the money we earn in the pearl, we turn into a celebration of life with our friends and with our family. Line four is all about charity. It's a, a directing the life force to helping other people. Sometimes people in life aren't in a place to celebrate and what they need is practical help. And that's what the fourth line does. Line five 
uses what they've gained to wield their power in guiding the world towards a higher awakening. They are the modern day Robin Hood. Line six, six lines into it that everything is perfect as it is and at the same time that there is so much to be done. But their prosperity comes from a deep trust in the natural rhythms of the universe. There's no need to struggle. So now what? Now that you have a general understanding of how your profile works, what do you do with it? And firstly, this is a living wisdom that ripples and opens inside of you. So you have to contemplate, you have to give it space and time. We spend time with each sphere, with each line, with each pathway. Take as long as you need with each and you will see those themes manifesting in your outer life. You don't need more knowledge. You need to notice what's already happening. This other stuff you don't need. So contemplation is the one thing that is not negotiable. However, these other things can be helpful. Um, information is power. It can save us time. So number one, read the Gene Key from the Gene Keys book. Contemplate it for a while. That one's easy. You can also get the companion books. Um, there are books that Richard Rudd goes over his personal contemplation on the Gene Keys. There's a book for each of the sequences, the activation, the Venus, and the Pearl. That's a great place to dig in. There are online courses, which is what I did because it plugs in your specific gene key and line into the course itself. Um, it also gives meditations and additional resources that I haven't found anywhere else. You could do an online retreat. You could sign up for the Pulse, which is the Gene Keys newsletter. So those are just a couple places where you can gain more wisdom, more knowledge, more understanding. Where to start? The final piece here. Start, my advice is the activation sequence. Um, however, you could also look at the first module in each of those online courses that I mentioned, Activation, Venus, and Pearl. The first section of it is free. So you could go in and you could explore. And just because I'm saying activation sequence is the place to start, Always trust your intuition. Maybe it's not the right place for you. There is no hard and fast in life ever. Also, there is a new course, a new uh, new to the Gene Keys course, which if you go to genekeys.com, you'll see it there. I haven't done that yet, so I'm not sure how it is, but everything that they put out is great. So that could be a great place to start too. Finally is to just follow my stuff. I've got a lot of different things out there on the different sequences, on different spheres specifically. I just really tried to touch broadly on everything here to give you this big picture of how everything works. Um, but I drill down into lots of different stuff. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. I know that was a long one. Um, hopefully it was helpful though. Hopefully it gives you an opportunity for this wisdom to change your life as it has changed mine. I can tell you that the world looks different to me because of the Gene Keys. And that's why I do these videos. I do them because I want other people to experience what I have experienced. There is no wondering for me. Somebody asked Carl Jung if he believed in God, and he said he didn't believe, he knew. And the Gene Keys is what got me to that place. And when you get there, it changes everything. Thanks, guys.